couple of my friends on YouTube. I'm Box Bandy for those who just came on here. And I wanted to share a message with you tonight. I may stumble over my words. I do that when I'm really tired. And I had a stroke a few years back, so I still have some of the side effects. So I have a droopy eye, a stumbling tongue, and sometimes muscle twitches and difficulty with my left arm and shoulder. Uh, so I just want to tell you a bit about that. So here we go. So I hope this video will help people that are dealing with heavy depression and in situations they feel they can't live with anymore. And I hope this also will help people that have lost their faith in God. So uh, about seven or eight years ago, I had been in a marriage. It was a very bad marriage. I was married to an alcoholic husband. He was very controlling verbally and emotionally abusive, and in some ways, he was physically abusive. At a point, a certain point in my life, I knew I couldn't deal with that anymore, so I left him. I actually got the divorce. I lived apart from him for over a year, and because I was still in love with him, he was almost 18 years older than me. He needed a lot of help around the home and things like that. He, there were so many things he couldn't do. And I felt so bad. I felt like I should be there to help him. So I kept going back to visit and staying for a few days here and a few days there, traveling long distances just to be there to help him. So at a certain point, I agreed to come back and stay there and help him. I managed to get through another six months of living in that home with him. He was an alcoholic when I met him, but I didn't realize it yet. Of course, when he met me, I was a gambler. I was a smoker. I was addicted to prescription pain medication and antidepressants. I had other problems too, of course. From years of childhood abuse and previous marriages, I had all kinds of problems. So I didn't make it easy, but it still wasn't a good marriage. So I take some of the responsibility for my actions in that marriage. It was at the point where I truly wanted to die. I knew I would have to make a decision. Get busy living or get busy dying. I believed in God, but I didn't understand why he allowed me to have so much misery. And I thought he didn't love me. I didn't think I was even lovable. I was so wrong. I made a choice at that point to get busy living. So I decided to load up my car, pack everything I could, whatever I needed to survive. I left. I was over $10,000 in debt. I had no job because I couldn't physically work anymore. When I finally left, I was dealing with PTSD and deep dark depression from all the abuse and control I had experienced throughout my life from childhood on. I had multiple, multiple bad marriages. I always chose the wrong men. And when I did, they were always abusive in one way or another, usually a lot of ways. <laughs> and I just wanted my freedom. 
I wanted to be able to say what I'd wanted. I wanted to be able to think what I thought. I wanted to be able to make the decisions I chose, not that somebody else chose for me. I wanted to get out there and find something to be happy about, something to smile about. Well, that's a whole lot of stuff. I determined I'm going to find a way to be happy. I put a smile on my face, even though I didn't feel happy all the time. I determined I would be happy. I made a choice to be happy. So when I went the, to that first RTR a few months later, I was smiling. I was working on it. It took a long time, but from that RTR, when Bob Wells put the video out of me living in my car on $800 a month, I started to feel better all the time. Each day that I worked through it and did my self-therapy, things I talked to myself and told myself good things positive things. I told myself I was a worthwhile human being. That I told myself and started to feel that God loved me. That somebody loved me. Somebody cared about me. I started to believe it. Then people started to notice me after he put out that video. People started talking to me. And talking to me as a human being, even interested in what I had to say. I started making my own choices in my life. I had the freedom to come and go as I pleased. And do and say what I pleased. And feel what I felt. It was such a... Such a healing to know that I'm lovable. I soon found out that God truly loved me. It was quite an enlightenment. I had a reason to live. I could smile again, really smile. For a few years, people always tried to encourage me when I met them to do a YouTube channel. I was still a loner. I still liked to be alone. I wasn't really part of in any groups. I didn't join in with the caravans only maybe one or two times for a week at the most. So that first few years, I did a lot of healing, a lot of soul searching, a lot of prayer. Also faced a lot of difficulties, had a lot of financial problems and a lot of health problems. That first year I was very sick and I almost died. I had hyperthyroid. I finally got to the hospital to a doctor where they diagnosed me and I was told I had to get it taken care of immediately. So I was traveling at that time quite a bit. I drove up to Washington to visit my family and I had to come back to California to get it taken care of because my insurance would not cover me up there. When I saw the doctor, she gave me three options. So I was told I could either have a surgery which would remove my thyroid completely or I could take some pills, but I would have to be supervised by the doctor for at least a year, which meant I would have to stay with my ex-husband for that time till I they determined if it would actually help me or not. Or I could have radioactive iodine to kill the thyroid. Those were my three choices. 
and I went with the radioactive iodine. I think I made a bad choice. I let them kill my thyroid with radioactive iodine. As soon as they killed my thyroid, I had partial blindness, aching, hurting eyes, burning, watering, had a double vision, and then I started having bulging eyes and was getting worse and worse. My eyes were sticking out of the socket. It was weird looking and feeling. It, it was not a good thing. So then the only resolution for that was to have surgeries. So I had four major eye surgeries. That year, I faced so many trials. You would not believe all the things I had to go through. I was completely alone. I didn't have any friends around me. I dealt with the loss of my little service animal, Dolly. I still miss her. Maxie was a wonderful dog, but he can never replace Dolly. Anyhow, so that same year, I had a stroke. I broke my back. I broke my wrist. When I found out I would have to have the eye surgeries, I had moved down to Ajo, near the Mexican border, about 30 miles, to a campground. I had no utilities. I did have running water on my site. I was broke. So I went through this all through the summer. And the heat was as high as 127 degrees with no air conditioning, no electricity. I did have a couple of fans, but it was like a blast furnace inside. I had no shade shelter either, so I just, it was difficult. So I dealt with all that at the same time, all in one year. God created a miracle in me by helping me get through that. There is no way anybody could have gone through all that in that short a period of time without some kind of intervention and God did intervene. He helped me cope. He helped me get through it without heavy drugs. I stopped all my medication before this all happened. And so I didn't want to take heavy medication. I took a few pain medication and the required stuff that I had to for the surgeries. Other than that, I did it. I just had to cope with the pain and deal with it. But God helps me, help me get through all of that. So anybody that says there's not a God, I would have to disagree with you. Because I know there is a God, and he does exist. And he was there for me every step of the way, and has been. Throughout my life, I could never have survived if it hadn't been for God. And I believe he saved me for a purpose. My purpose here on earth, I truly believe, is to help others. So I was gradually healing through my past, my bad marriages, my bad choices, and all my medical issues. Later, after about two, a little over two years from the first RTR I went to, I was finally convinced I should start the YouTube channel. I didn't want to do it. I kept saying no and resisting, but finally I gave in because I felt God compelled me to do it, to help others. Little did I know at the time that God had plans for me. He knew exactly what I needed. So I started the YouTube channel 
And as it grew, I grew and I healed. I made friendships, a large community around me of people from all over the world. Then I started to heal, get it back, getting better all the time. Living as a nomad, most of the time I was outside. I was healing in nature. I could see all the beauty around me. Every day I found something to smile about. Every day I found joy. It's been a little over three years now. My YouTube channel has grown from no subscribers to almost 25,000 subscribers today. And I've just been so blessed by my channel. It has given me so much, including some financial stability. I went from at the beginning, $800 a month, and now about $1,000 a month on Social Security. And I receive about average $400 a month, sometimes more, sometimes less, for my YouTube channel content. Imagine YouTube pays people to have people watch their videos and their ads. Thank you. Thank you. It's helped me a lot. I have been able to purchase what I need to run my channel and also buy some things I needed. The final thing I want to say is I'm a living miracle. A miracle of God. I had no business being here. Yet, here I am. God has worked a miracle in me. Anybody says there is a no God, they don't know me. If you don't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, maybe it's time to check it out. If you don't believe in God, what do you have to lose and what do you have to look forward to as this world starts to crumble around us? Open your eyes and look around. See what's happening. Do, does man have the answers? God does. If you hadn't, haven't accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, I beg you to find out and do so. Let him into your heart. So you can have the hope like, like I have. To live forever in a perfect world under a righteous ruler, our King and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is in heaven now, getting ready to come back and take his loved ones to him. I'll close with my song, Thank You, God. And I thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Sorry. I thank you all for Hello friends, I wrote this song recently, I thought I would like to share it with you. I'm not very good on the guitar, my voice is not very good, but I thought the song was appropriate, so I wanted to share it with you. It's called Thank You God. Thank you God for showing me how you intended for my be. Thank you, God, for guiding me into a world where I can be just me. I love the mountains, the trees, and the streams. I love the desert and wildlife it brings, the freedom of my life allows me to roam wherever I go it becomes my new home I don't have much but it is enough my happiness doesn't depend on my stuff 
The friends I have made are a treasure to me. These are the things that matter to me. Thank you, God, for showing me how you intended for my life to be. Thank you, God for guiding me into a world where I can be just me. Life is exciting, not easy for sure. Fresh air and sunshine for my health is the cure. Out in God's nature where there is strife. I am content to live a carefree life. Learning to thrive with a whole lot less. My life is full and free of stress. I love my God who has given to me beauty and wonders so amazing to see. Thank you, God, for showing me how you intended for my life to be. Thank you, God, for guiding me into a world where I can just me. He is my God to where I should be. Just look around you and get out to see. God is my strength inspiring to me. I have become who he led me to be. Thank you God for showing me how you intended for my life to be. Thank you, God, for guiding me into a world where I can be just me.